Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual Ask Me Anything with Luminary Labs President Jana Gilbert. And for those of you who may not know, we are a strategy and innovation consultancy based in New York City. My name is Naomi Naik. I'm on the communications team. I'm a senior communications associate. And today, Jana will be answering frequently asked questions from how Luminary Labs teams are structured and how we plan uh, for career trajectories to what it was like when she transitioned from a large company like McKinsey to a boutique consulting firm. Um, so a few items before we get started, this will be recorded and available to watch after this week. There's also a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window that you can use to submit your questions at any time. We'll try our best to answer as many questions as we can, and we'll be first starting with the questions submitted through the registration form. You can also learn more about our work and explore current opportunities at luminary-labs.com. So Jana, I'm so thrilled to be in conversation with you today. Do you mind introducing yourself to those in our audience who may not know you? Hi, Naomi, thank you. And hello to everybody. It's really great to be here today. Um, so my name is Jana Davidson Gilbert, I'm the president at Luminary Labs. Um, and I joined Luminary Labs about nine years ago, as you mentioned, following about seven years at McKinsey before that. So I think we could probably get started um, with you telling us about your career path and why you almost actually left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so as I said, I, I joined the LL after you know seven years in a large management consulting firm. Um, and during that time, it was a great experience. And I really learned a ton and got to work with incredible people. Um, and then there's a point when I decided it was time to leave for a number of factors. And as you said, like I thought that was it. I was done with consulting. Um, I had spent the last few years really working on our innovation service line. And I was ready to apply the skills I learned through that work to help build and grow a company. So I really started my search process and was looking at all sorts of different companies here in the New York City area. and. I met Sarah Hollebeck, our CEO, through a pretty thin thread. Uh, I was taking lots of meetings and introductions, and I was just really inspired by the type of leader she was and the vision she had for the company that she was building. And I realized I wanted to help her build and grow Luminary Labs. And also had to admit to myself that maybe I like consulting and I was good at consulting, and that was actually okay. What do you feel were some of the major differences when you moved from a large firm like McKinsey to a boutique consulting firm like Luminary? Well, lifestyle is obviously a big one. You know, I was a road warrior, so I was traveling Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday most weeks for the better part of seven years. That was a lot. And hours were long, you know, probably a good week was looking at 60 hours. And I was ready for a change. I just had my first child. And it was made clear to me that I was going to have to continue to travel um, upon return. And it was something I wasn't really interested in. And so I was looking for you know, a little bit of a better lifestyle, um, but I was also looking for a difference in my day-to-day. -day. Um, the type of consulting we do at Luminary Labs is different in a lot of ways, because here we also do like the upfront research and strategy, but we pull through the execution. So we take our recommendations and we make them real. And I really love that. I love seeing the work we do exist in the world. Um, and that's a big difference from, I think, some of what the larger consulting core functions were doing when I was there. Um, one of my last big projects when I was at McKinsey was leading a global innovation transformation program. And I love not doing my day-to-day -day in PowerPoint all the time um, and actually executing change across the organization. It was exciting. Um, I definitely. I want to, so go ahead. I was just going to say I definitely agree with that aspect. I think Luminary Labs, our consulting is very unique in that you're often seeing these multi-phase projects from beginning to end, um, which is something that you don't necessarily see elsewhere. Yeah, and it also means that like what you're doing is changing all of the time, and so like our day to day can be very different. Um, I think something else that I really love, and I'm, I'm not sure if like you have seen this difference also. Um, from the work you did before, but we really are able to tap into expert networks in a way that I was not able to at a really big consulting firm. Like when we want to bring the best to bear for a client project at Luminary Labs, like we can reach out to the people who are like leading the work directly. I love that on CT Mission CubeSat, we could get the actual inventors of the CubeSat like in a room with us. Um, 
we did a demo day for one of our projects and we got Vint Cert, who is widely seen as one of the fathers of the internet to speak at our demo day, like kind of incredible opportunities, which is interesting, right? Because we're such a small firm, but I think because we really care about and nurture the network, we can build like these really strong connections and I think it makes our work better. Absolutely. And I think this actually goes a little bit into our next question. So as you said, um, Luminary Labs was a pretty young company nine years ago. Um, so what was Luminary Labs like when you first got here and how do you feel like things have changed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I was, I was reflecting back on this as I was thinking about this um, session today. And you know, when I met Sarah, Luminary Labs was a young company, only a few years old, but really doing groundbreaking work. I was really impressed that this like group of exceptional people, like some people like at the top of their game, some people who are really new to this space, but they were like making magic happen. And they were doing this in this like small company in this tiny little office in Tribeca, but they designed and stood up these programs that nobody thought was possible. Um, you know, this could have been like the first innovation challenge run by a pharma, which somehow went from like idea to announcement at a major conference in I think six to eight weeks, um, or helping a client move from being drug centric to patient centric, like they were in the White House. And I was like, wow, the work that this little company is doing is really meaningful. Um, and I wanted to be a part of that. And I wanted to help take it from where it was to like, really bring it to like the next stage of development, which was make it a more professionally run like consulting organization and bring the best to bear what I learned at a huge consulting firm and think about, well, what does that mean for a place like Luminary Labs, which in a lot of ways is very different. Um, but I think in some important ways, it's the same. Like the, we have a very high bar for like what we deliver to our clients. Like we want to exceed their expectations. And for me, that was very similar from a big firm to Luminary Labs and something that like I know all of us care about. We want to do really great work day in and day out. So aside from our actual work, um, how does leadership at Luminary Labs set up employees for success and what does professional development look like within the workplace? Sure. Um, so, you know, one thing that has changed, maybe before I get to that is as an organization, we've also really change like how we're structured. And we do work, when I joined, we were doing mostly like healthcare work. And now we work across our four focus areas. Um, and we have really sort of like found our true north, I think along the way on working on these thorny problems that matter um, and developing our approach to consulting. And so I think we've done a lot, not only in development of like who we are as a consulting organization, but building on the really strong beginnings of the foundation that, that Sarah built and establishing a clear org structure, we defined roles, created clear trajectory paths, and really establish a lot of professional development norms along the way. Um, and we've been a place where we've always really valued people coming from different places and having different backgrounds and trying to think about how can we make sure that like every employee's trajectory matters and to create a consistent process and try to bring as much transparency to it as possible. Um, so our process is like, we have like an annual professional development cycles rooted in personal goals. We focus on skill development with like a clearly defined rubric. And then everybody has an assigned people leader that is responsible for their professional development with like weekly checkpoints, um, and really helping that person as they're thinking about what skill sets do they do they want to develop and how do we give them at bats to reach their goals and how do we make sure they get the experience they need to get to the next the next role. Um, it's really important, I think, to all of our leaders that we want to give people opportunities to stretch into new capabilities and opportunities, um, but also set people up for success. So sort of that balance between how do you give somebody like a lot of opportunities, but make sure that they have like the support they need to be successful? Definitely. I think uh, Luminary Labs is one of the most robust professional development programs um, compared to some of the other places I had the chance to work at before. And I think um, there's always the idea of putting, I think, the individual in, in the driver's seat and having them really be able to plan out what they want their trajectory to look like at all. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, everybody's trajectory is going to look a little bit different. And I think that we can also structure roles to like suit what people are passionate about and like where their strengths lie, which is one of the nice things in a small organization. Like we don't have a committee off in another country somewhere deciding if you get to get to the next role. Like we can actually help co-design roles together, um, which I really love. So we do have a number of open roles right now. So what we are the types of roles at Luminary Labs um, for people who may not know and how do people progress from role to role? Sure. Um, so we do have a number of open roles right now and we are always looking for people with like, like I said, a range of backgrounds. We've had people recently join us from like the International Rescue Committee, American Express, people with experience at New York City Department of Education, actually like an educator in a charter school. Um, the UN Foundation, although you're not a recent hire. Um, <laughs> so our, um, our roles are basically like pretty consistent across our different um, groups. So like we have three main teams at the company right now, strategy, communications, um, and uh, design and insights. And our entry level role at our company is an associate role, which is typically somebody with a few years of experience. At this point, the like consulting or client services experience is not required, but we're assuming people come in with a basic, like fundamental skill set that you've learned in your first few years in some sort of like professional setting. Um, and that's really just because we're a small company and we don't necessarily have like the infrastructure for sort of like all that like brand new first job training that a lot of people can get at the larger organizations. Um, and then the next role is uh, a senior associate role. And that person has a few more years of experience. They're going to be able to operate more independently. Um, and they likely have a strength in one of the three or four primary capabilities of the role. Um, and it depends on whether you're in design or communications or strategy, like what those capabilities are. And then our manager roles are somebody who comes in with a pretty strong client services skill set and can lead the development of deliverables, manage people in teams, and they can work across multiple projects. Um, and they're typically involved also in recruiting and other initiatives across the company, but also senior associates and associates are often involved in those as well. But at that stage, it might be a little bit more um, dependent on the individual and their interest. Um, in terms of progressing from role to role, we have like a pretty clear set of rubrics and we're looking for people sort of like to master competency of the skill set in their existing role and you know, show the sort of proficiency to move into whatever the next role is. And we go through a, like we were just discussing like a regular like development review cycle of everybody um, to really try to assess like where somebody is in their trajectory and to try to say, okay, here are like the skill sets that this person needs to get to the next role. Like how can we give them at bats and opportunities to build out and demonstrate those skill sets? And even though we're a small company, I found that we often can like think about ways to like restructure a project or bring somebody into a new project to provide those opportunities to build and develop those skill sets um, so that they can then be ready for like the next role. I think this was answered a little bit already, um, but in terms of like our actual project teams, do you mind um, shedding a little bit of light on like how we organize those teams and how we decide who's gonna truly be like driving a lot of the work behind them? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, we have a few teams at the company. Um, so our largest group is the uh, group of strategy consultants. And then we have our communications team, which you are a part of. Um, we also have our design insights team and also content and community not to be forgotten, even though Jessica is not with us today. Um, but those are those are four like teams on the client delivery side. We also have operations team who we could not live without and make every day better. Um, but in terms of how we organize our client work, usually the strategy team is going to be at the core of driving our work. Um, and that team is usually consists of an associate or a senior associate, and then an engagement manager and a director. And that team is really sort of going to own the client relationship, own the overall project plan and drive all of the day-to-day -day work we're doing. They're also responsible for 
um, driving like the research and the strategy development. They're responsible for like standing up the program and pulling through to the execution, but they could not do their work without all of the other teams who are really instrumental to us delivering successful programs. Um, so the communications team, um, almost every project has at least one if not two people from the communications team involved in the beginning. Um, and that is also true for our design insights team. It was an early learning for me. Um, one of my first projects, I remember like the strategy team, we designed the whole thing and then we handed it to our communications team and they're like, we cannot market this. Um, this doesn't make any sense to like an audience. And so we've really learned a lot over the years. And now like we start the projects with everybody at the table. Um, the communications team is going to lead the development of like the, um, the voice and tone and the messaging and how do we communicate this to the audience? What are different stakeholders that we wanna be thinking about? And how do we need to adjust our messages for each of them as well as helping to design like all the actual assets we need to go to market. You guys also have been amazing at helping us with events like these and making sure that you know we always show up um, the best possible. And then our design insights team is helpful in not only designing our visual identity for our programs, but also for designing experiences. They lead a lot of our design research um, in our research phases of our project. And then content and community is making sure that everything um, in terms of the, the story that we're telling and the language we're using is really thoughtful and hits the mark in terms of the audience we're looking at. Um, but at the same time, every single one of those teams is involved in strategy. And you guys bring on the communications team a lot to bear on like how we think about designing the strategy early on because you see a lot of different programs. And the design team is also really helpful in us thinking through, like how do we make sure that all of our programs are user-centered um, and bringing that, that user-centered thinking um, very early on in the project. Yeah, I think a huge part of all of our teams is just the ability to collaborate with one another. Like none of us are working in silo um, and that's a huge, a wonderful aspect of a lot of our project <laughs> cycles because um, often they are having again like their multi-phase projects um, there's a lot more involved than just you know as a communications team member just writing you know assets and copy there's a lot of other um, aspects of the strategy that we get to work on as well which is always really exciting yeah absolutely and even though i think we have done a lot of work in defining roles and i know that we have a very clear racy across communication, CNC, and the strategy team for projects, you know, we're also like a small company and people are really generous and helpful in supporting each other. So sometimes people also jump into different roles when we had a colleague out on parental leave, um, you know, your colleague Mercedes, she jumped in and helped us do like a lot of our research work streams on another project. And so I think there's always opportunities to flex into different roles as well. Um, we don't have to, we're not so siloed. It's a very collaborative team, as you mentioned. So aside from collaboration, um, do you mind sharing what day-to-day -day life as Luminary Labs team member looks like? Um, maybe you can start with the strategy team. Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, like the strategy team is often sort of like the core of the project and leading the project from the beginning to the end. And we do a, run a lot of open innovation programs at Luminary Labs. And those programs are similar to some of the other projects we have in that we're starting with research that informs our strategy, and then we actually design and stand up the program. So, you know, the day-to-day -day looks very different depending on where you might be um, in a project. So in the early days, there's going to be a lot of project management and just getting the project stood up correctly, you know, kicking off with the client, getting ourselves organized, making sure that whole team um, that we just talked about knows what's happening. And then we normally move into uh, a research phase where the strategy team is going to be doing a few things. One is um, conducting desk research, so reading literature, trying to get smart on the topic. Uh, that usually involves also talking to a large number of subject matter experts to make sure we're getting like real insight from the field. And then we move into uh, more of like a design phase. 
And so that will look like actually taking all of what we've learned in research and working collaboratively with the client to lead them through a process of co-creation. We're actually designing the program. Um, so the day-to-day -day there is going to be a lot of coordinating with the client, getting their feedback, making sure we're staying aligned on the goals that we're trying to accomplish. And then once we're done with like the design phase of work, we move into usually a production phase. And so that's going to be a lot of writing and editing, coordinating with all of the different teams we just mentioned. Like this is when like the whole machine starts really moving and I find it to be a really exciting time and making sure that we have all of our bases covered, but then doing like all of the like details that we need to be able to launch a successful program. Um, so one day that could be loading copy into Luminary Lightbox. Um, another day could be building outreach spreadsheets. Um, it could be writing some messages. Um, and then a lot of client coordination. And then we get into launch, um, we, are, we are going and we are running. And so that day-to-day -day could look like um, sending outreach messages, preparing for and leading webinars, answering questions when people are interested in our programs, more client management, <laughs> um, and working really closely with the communications team who is also you know, really supporting like the outreach of new programs. And then after that, we're moving usually into a judging process, so a lot of coordination with judges, reading submissions if it's an open innovation challenge, really understanding the content, and then leading um, uh, a judging deliberation call, writing memos. And then oftentimes our projects end with an accelerator incubator type phase, which is really exciting. So the day to day there would be setting up programming, um, running more webinars and meetings, maybe designing a boot camp with our DNI team and running a boot camp. It could be preparing for a demo day. It just depends on how the, the challenge ends. I love always hearing about challenge life cycle because I think it's so fascinating because so many of our projects are obviously not synchronous, like they're in different parts. Um, so we have a varying number of projects working and moving very quickly at the same time. Yes. Um, which kind of goes into our last question, which um, ties back to Luminary Labs has come a very long way since you started. And what do you feel is next and what changes are you currently navigating and how are you approaching all of this change, not only with the pandemic, but also an ever changing world? Yeah, we have changed a lot since I joined, um, not only in terms of the type of work we do, but the type of company we are. Um, and a lot of that change is exciting. And you know, some of it's really hard. Um, so the last few years have been with the pandemic, um, as well as I think a lot of organizations thinking more deeply and more meaningfully about their DEI work. Um, we have transition from a fully in-person company to a hybrid company. So we are both in our homes right now, um, but we also really value, you know, the in-person collaboration and some of the magic that happens there. Um, so we've really been trying to find our footing on what is what does flexibility look like at Luminary Labs now? How do we make sure that we're capturing that value being together, but giving people, you know, some of the flexibility that we all were able to very quickly get during the pandemic? Um, and at the same time, we have gone through, you know, a real process of trying to figure out what is, what is the diversity, equity, inclusion work look like at Luminary Labs. Um, and that's been a lot of really hard work, but really important work that I'm personally really grateful that we've undertaken, um, both as a company and me personally. Um, you know, you know, because we both do some of this work together that we are both like now on a committee to really think about what are the actions we wanna take at the company to further our goals for um, DEI. And you know, we started by really defining what equity meant to us as a company. Um, and also to revisit and redefine our company values, right? Cause that's like sort of like the foundation we have to build on and going through that collaborative process of saying like, what are the values? Like, what do we, what is important to us as an organization? Um, what has been important that we want to keep and what actually do we want to let go because we have sort of evolved as an organization. Um, and I'm, you know, really looking forward to continuing to, to do this work. One of, one of the important um, words in our definition of equity is that it's a process. Like we are never going to be done. 
um, which means that we hopefully will never be satisfied. We always will want to accomplish and do more as an organization. Um, so I think that that work has been really important to us as a company and to me personally as, as a leader. Um, I think that we have done a lot just as a company in terms of how we've grown and evolved over the last nine years, but I also feel like we're just getting started. I think there's so much opportunity for us. And I think that there is just incredible talent in the company. And I'm really excited to see like as a company, what we can do and where we can take the company, like where we'll be in nine years from now. Um, so um, I think that we will continue to double down in some of our existing um, focus areas. We do quite a bit of work in education um, and health, and we are looking to continue to expand like the work we do in infrastructure and continue to, to grow our teams. I think um, one, of, one of the things that was part of our now DEI work was also revisiting our values. Um, and I think, a huge part of that work was also that we realized that a lot of these values that we were kind of rewriting were already so inherent in a lot of our project work and kind of the lens that we not only uh, work with our subject matter experts, but also as we're approaching um, submissions for a lot of our challenges and who actually are we able to promote these challenges to and who's allowed and able um, and hopefully um, willing to participate in a lot of these incredible challenges as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we have continued to try to think about how can we make all of the work we're doing for our clients, you know, really infused with more equity and, in, and a more inclusive approach. Um, and that work has continued, but we've also turned that lens on ourselves um, and make sure that we're not just thinking about this for our client work, but we're trying to think about that for ourselves as well. So as someone who's now been at LL for nine years, and of course has had a plethora of experience uh, pre-LL, um, do you have any advice to those who may be looking um, to raise potential change or ideas in a corporate setting or environment? Um, often places these days, um, we're seeing a lot of budget cuts or layoffs um, and often direction of projects are changing or the vision is changing. So do you have any insight for those who may be, you know, either at a mid or entry level position and are trying to um, be a little bit more vocal about the change that they wish to see in their work environment? I think this is like an incredible moment in time where we are seeing that like distributing power is the future. And so to take opportunities to really drive change forward and to seek out like those sponsors who truly like see you and hear you and believe in you and to find those opportunities to, to sort of like take, take things and run with them, right? It could be, there's so many opportunities at organizations. And if you're in a place where like they don't see you and they don't wanna give you that opportunity, you know, it is time to find a new role out there because you know, life's too short to be somewhere where you don't feel like you are able to like reach your full potential. I think that's great advice. We also do have a lot of um, audience members who have a design background. So I'm not sure mm. if you wanna share uh, a little bit of your ties to design and, <laughs> and also kind of ties back to why um, you may have transitioned to LL. Sure. Um, so, as I mentioned, like my last few years at McKinsey were spent in our global innovation service line, which was sort of like my introduction to design thinking. I have like a background in business. I did business undergrad, I got my MBA. And so it was an incredible learning opportunity for me, but it was honestly just the start. It was just sort of like learning like the 101 of design thinking. Um, and I had this great opportunity um, about a year after I joined United Labs to teach a course at the School um, of Visual Arts. Uh, it's called Products of Design. We've been fortunate to hire a lot of graduates from that program who are amazing. And I taught a business model prototyping class for designers. And there was no syllabus or curriculum. The program just started. I was the first, you know, per first person teaching this class. 
So I had to design it all from scratch. And I started by using, you know, some materials that I had developed over my time doing innovation work and really learned a lot in working in designers and like the way they think about identifying opportunity and how much that balances out. I think the more like analytical approach maybe that I had been taught and I had grown up with. And so people say this all the time, but teaching this course, like I learned, I think as much as I taught the students, if not more about, you know, how I can reframe how I look at opportunities and problems, but also how designers think and what they can bring to the table. Um, and I think something that's really different at Luminary Labs is, you know, we really view like our design team as like real partners in our work. Um, and, you know, in some places I think like business is here and like design is off here to the side and like design is really like the foundation of like a lot of our work when i joined the company it was you know a huge part of what we brought and you know winnie who is our design manager has brought sort of like an incredible like new energy to our design work at the company um and has really infused a lot of our projects with design research where maybe it didn't exist before like we're putting it in some of our proposals and making sure that all of our insight gathering is centered on real user needs. Um, and I'm really excited uh, about that work and continuing to learn. And I love, you know, being in any meeting led or attended by like our design insights team. I feel like every time we've had a presentation by the design insights team, I've definitely learned something new and it's always something that's transferable to not only um, work in the communications realm, but also in strategy as well. We also had another question um, regarding seeking leadership opportunities in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, so often when you're working a particular role, um, it may not be obvious um, to begin with, like where exactly you can make your greatest impact or contribution. Um, so do you have any advice for those who may be um, either in a current role where that's not a possibility or even how maybe it's approached at LL as well? Um, that's a great question. Sometimes I think you have to find the opportunities outside of your organization. Um, so if they seem limited in the workplace, like there might be professional organizations where there's opportunities. I'm a part of Women in Innovation. And one of the interns there who was in graduate school at the time, like she saw an opportunity in women in innovation to take on a real le leadership role. And I've seen that pay off in incredible ways in her career. Um, she has quickly jumped many, many levels in her job because of, I think what she learned, but also the community of leaders that she tapped into. Um, and I think that is one opportunity to so think about like what you're passionate about and see if there are other professional organizations um, that you can become a part of, volunteer your time to them if you believe in them. Um, they don't have to be paid clubs or anything like that that are exclusive. There's there's a lot out there. Um, I think if you know you're looking for things in your workplace, again, I think it's like find find the person who you think will give you that opportunity. Um, find the person who really cares about you and see if they can help you know design some opportunities for you. Um, I think at Luminary Labs, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for people to like raise their hands and take things on. Like you've done that with, you know, some of our committees with these AMAs, this is the second one. They were like all your idea and you made sure that they happened. Um, and so I think that there's a ton of opportunity. Uh, one of our colleagues, Lisa Marie, um, she was helping with some of our work-based learning programming, but she didn't just like help, like she ran the whole thing. She designed it, she ran it. like. There's just so much opportunity, I think, if you if you see something that you're passionate about, to just say, like, this is something that I want to run with, um, you know, find the people in the organization who can support you and go from there. I think another way that Luminary Labs is extremely supportive of contribution and impact is also the opportunity to um, educate oneself outside of work. Um, we do also yeah. offer a stipend that a lot of um, employees use to either like gain additional skills in their particular area or to try something new. Um, so I think that's another um, opportunity where not only you may be uh, gaining skills elsewhere, but also you can bring it back and be able to take on something new in the workplace. Have you used it? I used it, I think last year, 
Um, but I haven't, I have, this year went by really fast. So I feel like I have to still think and decide what I want to do with my particular stuff. Yeah. I have a couple months. Um, okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, th I think that's a great point. I think the stipends are there. And I also feel like it's part of our jobs as like people leaders to help identify opportunities for that growth, because as a small company, we obviously have we actually have pretty good training in a lot of ways, but there's like a lot of things that we can offer. So it's great that people can can do that. Um, we also send people to conferences, which I think is, you know, a more natural learning opportunity to learn about topics, to meet people, and to really be exposed to like the the world a little bit more broadly. And um, I don't think we mentioned this yet, but we also have gather, um, which we have during our week, which. <laughs> is like one hour that we use to either, you know, discuss things that are going on currently within the company, um, but also it's often used as kind of like a sharing um, place where a lot of um, times either for projects or other work that employees are doing, they have that one hour to be able to share um, their impact and their contributions and what else they've been up to. Um, and I think that's another um, awesome place where often people are then making connections and they realize that other people have interests um in areas and I think it's a great a great opportunity for a lot of us to showcase what what else we're doing outside of the company yeah that's a great point gather actually originated because we used to have like luminary learnings and we'd have like we had all these like different things running I was like why don't we just do all gather once a week and we can do lots of different things in that time but at least like we have that hour where nobody has other meetings on the calendar and I love the gathers I especially love the gathers where you know, they're led by, you know, maybe somebody who's joined the team recently, we get to learn a little bit more about them and their backgrounds and what they've been working on and like their specific areas of expertise. Absolutely. I think um, one question that we may not have answered yet is how do we ensure how we're doing so much work all the time. So how do we like internally ensure that we're making progress towards our goals? Um, I think not only as a team, like whether it be on projects, but also as individuals with our own personal development goals as well. Sure. Um, I think as an organization, the company goals, you know, Sarah has all hands a few times a year, and that's where she shares with the whole company, like what are our goals, where are we heading, um, what are we hoping to accomplish this year, and then she'll actually revisit those goals and say like, here's where we are against each of them, and you know, hopefully as many of them as possible, we made real progress, but maybe some of them we didn't. And so like, we wanna also acknowledge like those areas where maybe like we have more work to do or maybe the goal has changed. Um, I think as individuals, we each go through a goal setting process early in the year, um, usually in January and early February where somebody thinks about based on maybe what Sarah shared in the all hands and the goals for the company and each person's own, personal passions and what they really care about as well as where they want to be with their, um, in their professional trajectory. Like what do they want to accomplish in a year? And that's something where like the, the people leader will give feedback and set those goals together. And then we have a series of checkpoints um, every quarter where we make sure that we create time and space to talk about how um, each employee is doing against those goals, how the company can help, like what, what they need. Um, maybe the goals have changed, that's okay too. Um, and like maybe you want, to, want to revisit them because you either accomplished one or you have something else that's become you know, more important over the time. And those regular checkpoints are you know, good moments just to really think about trajectory and progress against goals. But also we have like every week people leaders meet with um, meet with the people that they're managing to provide either like, you know, support on the ground on a project, or if there's something around like maybe talking about, of course you want to take, but making sure that we have that space every week that is really focused on the individual and not just about the project and, you know, where the project is. That's a really great point. Um, and I think also that space offers a lot of times for us to also think about how to better <laughs> work with each other um yeah I think often um these projects are happening so quickly that um sometimes having the opportunity to slow down and just discuss how we can help each other and collaborate is always extremely helpful too 
I also found the the work we did around sort of like personal styles assessment really helpful to to learn like we're all coming from different points of view and we have like different strengths and like how can we how can we work differently with people when we understand them better but also how can we flex our own styles um so that like we can you know have a great experience working together i found that work really important and i'm excited to like continuously revisit it as new people join the team and go through the process also we were just talking about our styles actually yesterday in a committee meeting how were you we were discussing how a lot of a lot of people had similar styles in that committee and we were like this makes sense why we're all deciding to work on this together <laughs> um so with our limited time left um i would love to know what you are most looking forward to before the end of the year um, or for the year to come in 2023 for ll i that's a great question I think we have like a lot of really exciting projects in the works right now and i'm really excited to see some of them and where they're going to end up and some of them kick off that we haven't even announced yet um, we've done some like really incredible work getting some of these programs ready um, i'm also excited by the team we have and the team we're building um, i love you know all of the new people that have joined us recently and like the new energy they bring so i'm excited to see like how they're going to help continue to like transform the company because we are always we are always like changing and growing even though I think we have like our core foundation of who we are so excited to see what that team looks like. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll like have our big holiday party again and get to see all of our LL alum from seasons past because it's just the best group of people ever. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. And thank you, Jana, um, for giving us so much amazing information and, of course, amazing anecdotes as well. <laughs> um, and as um, our colleague Emily has posted in the chat, um, you can read more about our work at LL and explore a multitude of new opportunities to join our team in New York. Um, and we hope to see you at the next AMA. So I hope everyone has a great week. Thank Thanks you. everyone for joining us. Thanks, Naomi.